Sarah, welcome back. The next 30 minutes of this conversation, I hope it will inspire you, inform you, and more so open your mind. This morning, we want to discuss the issue of cerebral palsy here in Kenya. It's something that we don't discuss a lot, and we need to bring more attention to it. On set, you'll be introduced to a little girl called Brittany. She's only nine years old. Brittany will not be able to speak, but her well-enabled mother is here to tell her story, and she's looking very gorgeous. And of course, I also have on set, allow me to introduce closer seated next to me, I have Winnie Kubai. She is a pediatric nurse. And next to Winnie, I have Brittany herself and Brittany's mother, Sarah Mora. And on my far end, I have a pediatric occupational specialist, therapist, to be precise, Douglas Misiko. Thank you guys for coming this morning and helping Kenyans really understand the issue of cerebral palsy. Winnie, I'll start with you. Define for our viewers at home what cerebral palsy is. Thank you, Dizzy. Um, in short, I would want to say that cerebral palsy is a neurological disorder that will affect a motor or movement and posture. That's the easiest I can define it. Okay. Sure. That's right. Now, in the case of um, Brittany, mm -hmm. is, is it hereditary? Is, is, is one born with it? How, what, what happens? How does one um, get affected? Uh, cerebral palsy comes about uh, an insult to the developing brain. Mm -hmm. It could be congenital, but I may not go into the details of talking about the hereditary uh, cerebral palsy because it involves a lot about the genes or abnormal alleles. But today, because we want to talk more about prevention, since there are factors that can be, pre can be worked upon and prevent cerebral palsy, I may want to talk about it. Right. In, case of, uh, in, the case, like in the case of uh, Brittany, you're going to hear her story and you'll see that whatever happened to her could have been prevented. We'll get to the preventions in just a minute. Let me sure. loop in Sarah, the mother. Sarah, I think it's very confident and inspiring of you yeah. to come and let Kenyans and tell your story. Yeah. Um, tell me Brittany's story. She did Brittany. Nilipo kwa na mimba yake ilikuwa inanisumbua. Lakini nilipo fika wakati wa kujifungua, nilikuwa na prolonged deliver. Na ni wakati nilienda usiptali, nilipatiwa ma... Kuna dawa nilipatiwa. Ilikuwa nijifungua ni mande, nika, nika prolonged baka Wednesday. Mm. So kuna madawa walini patia, walini ekea maji ya uchungu. Mm. Wakati ilifika usiku, niliingia sanane, wakanembea nitajifungua jioni. Ilipofika jioni mtoto akawa shuki. Wakasema wataniekea maji ya uchungu hili mtoto ashuke. Na wakati niliwekewa hiyo maji, mtoto bado akawa ashuki. Mm. Nikaambiwa, nika wataniekea chupa nyingine kwa sababu hiyo maji ilikuwa uchungu sana. Mm. So wakasema tena, watani mpeke ingine the following day. So nikakaa hapo kwa hospitali mbaka tena kesho yake nilipofika kesho yake tena wakaniekea another drop hiyo drop tena ikaisha bado mtoto bado ashuke mm. so nikaambiwa exercise nitafanya ndio mtoto ashuke nitakuwa natembea kwa stairs napanda juu nashuka chini napanda nateremka bado mtoto akawa ashuke so wakaniambia kuna dawa zenye ni mzee alitumwa akaenda akanunua wakanipatia mm. ndipo nikajifungua Britney na nilipojifungua Britney hakulia immediately mm. walimchukua wakaniambia huyu mtoto amechoka wacha tuone kama atalia but amechoka wakaenda na yeye wakaniacha nilijifungua nili round 5 nikaletewa mtoto at 9 pm penye nil, vile nililetewa mtoto mm. hakuwa na any movement mm. hakuwa na lia mm. yani yuko tu ametulia mm. Na daktari ule alinileta mtoto aliniambia huyu mtoto amechoka muscles zake za shingo haizinyonya mm -hmm. utakuwa unamkamulia maziwa unampatia na syringe at the same time unamnyonyesha unamfundisha kunyonya utamfundisha so awakuniambia atakuwa na shida so nikasema ah, ni sawa vile wamesema so ni nikakaa hospitali for three days wakani release vile nilienda nyumbani sasa nilikuwa na hiyo kibarua ya kukamua maziwa nikimpatia na syringe at the same time namfundisha pia kunyonya nilifanya hivyo mpaka miezi mbili na nusu kielekea tatu ndio Britney akaanza kunyonya peke yake mm. so vile alianza kunyonya hakuna kitu ilinikujia kwa mind ataweza kuwa na kasoro mm. kwa sababu 
hakuna daktari alimention ata atakuwa na shida so nilichukulia tu ni ako sawa mm -hmm. vile alifika 5 months akifika 3 months tuka move mali tuka tunaishi tuka kuja huko Nairobi so bibi ya brother shimijangu ndiye aliniambia mimi vile anaona bridge na na grow ayuko sawa anafaa kuona daktari nikamuliza haje akaniambia anafaa kuona daktari so akaniambia tutatafuta pesa mpeleke Kenyatta akakwaka nitafutia pesa nikampeleka Kenyatta vile nilifika Kenyatta nikaulizwa the first thing daktari aliniuliza mm -hmm. bridge na lilia mm -hmm. ulipojifungua nikamwambia hakulia mm -hmm. Akanimbi, akaniuliza na kuna daktari wote yamewahi kuambia Britney ako na shida nikamwambia hapana akaniambia Britney ako na shida inaitwa cerebral palsy mm -hmm. nikamuliza sasa hiyo cerebral palsy ndio nini akaniambia cerebral palsy mtoto aspolia wakati umejifungua mm -hmm. ana anakuwa na hiyo condition inaitwa cerebral palsy kuna aki, ukijifungua kuna ile akilia kuna ile hewa wewe inaenda mpaka kwa brain mm -hmm. na sasa yeye vile hakulia daktari aliniambia hakupata hiyo hewa mm -hmm. so ndio kwa sababu akaniambia ni condition atakuwa nayo kwa maisha yake nikamwambia ni sawa na sasa nikamuliza nitamsaidia aje akaniambia utakuwa unamleta therapy twice a week mm -hmm. as so, a mother when you got that news mm -hmm. and britney was only five months old yeah how did that make you feel at that moment nililia nililia nikauliza god kwa nini mm -hmm. na nilipojifungua britney nilikuwa mdogo sasa nikilikuwa najiuliza sasa hii condition na nimeambiwa mtoto wangu atakuwa hivi sasa mwingine naye akakuja akaniambia unajua britney hata waika mm -hmm. britney Yaani maisha yake atakuwa hapa chini. Mm. Yuki kitu niuma. But I thank God nililia hiyo wakati. Nililia nilikuwa nakaa hivi na jiurumia. Hiyo wakati mzee alikuwa na kazi. Ikafika mzee na anataka kuniacha. Nilikuwa na challenge. But I thank God nilijipea nguvu. My relative walinikata and that's what's going to ask you yeah. did, did your family your relatives and your friends show you support kuna wale wana support na kuna wale hawana support but me nashukuru mungu kwa wale wana support na mungu aendelee kuwabariki wow. kwa sababu mm. hakuna yule mtu mwenye huwa anaitisha mm. ni mungu peana mm. na mi naweza ambia wazazi ule mtu akona huyu mtoto asiweji kufa moyo mm. Mm. ni mtoto tu kama yule mwingine na kila kiko ni kujipea moyo. Mm. Ule mzazi akona huyu mtoto mwenye akona cerebral palsy. Tuko na challenge. And it's nothing to be embarrassed about. Yeah. Wengine wanawaficha. Mm -mm. Wengi, wengi wao wanawaficha, mm. wengine anaona ah mtoto ataniletea aibu. But my side mimi nampenda ni mtoto wangu na I'm proud kutembea na yeye alipopotea. She's very beautiful. Yeah. She's very beautiful. <laughs> Nakapenda sana. Wini, Some, what are some of the symptoms? Because like Sarah's mom says, the doctors say that she didn't cry immediately she was conceived. Are there symptoms that specifically highlight to cerebral palsy? Now, at birth, it is not possible to say that this child will have cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. And that is why Mama Brittany may not have been informed. Mm -hmm. Because cerebral palsy will start manifesting, mm -hmm. or the signs and symptoms will start manifesting when the child develops something we call the gross motor skills. Mm -hmm. At birth, we have the fine motor skills, where we use the hands and the fingers, mm. and some reflexes we call the primitive reflexes, mm. which are present in every child, whether normal or abnormal. So it is not possible to tell. So they would not tell the uh, mother that your child will have cerebral palsy until the symptoms or the signs started, start exhibiting. And what we may see is that uh, when the child is supposed to start opening their fist at the end of three months, they has remained closed. Uh -huh. When the child is supposed to change from the flexed position, some may remain flexed, or they, if they're extending, they extend abnormally with either the plantar curved and the joints stiff. The neck, uh, at the end of three months, the child may be able to at least start uh, exhibiting signs of supporting the neck. So at that point, when you want to sit them up and the neck remains lagged, then that's the, at the point, that's the point you may start uh, thinking this child could be abnormal. So at birth, it is not very easy. 
unless now we start connecting the the the, the incidences. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is what happened at. Uh, at birth. Douglas Misiko, he is a pediatric occupational therapist. Douglas, take us through what therapy for people, more so children at Britney's age, what therapy looks like for children suffering from cerebral palsy? Okay, thanks. Um, in this case, therapy for is uh, according to the child's age. Mm -hmm. Remember, Britney, the mother realized that she had this case at uh, when when Prince was five months old, mm -hmm. uh, and that's only it only happens uh, uh, when maybe the mother or the the, the specialist or the, maybe the, the doctors didn't realize the that the case happened maybe at birth and just as um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the nurse has said. Mm -hmm. The case at birth, it is not able, it is, sometimes it is impossible to notice if the child will have this condition or not. So therapy in this case, yeah, we start therapy as early as possible, even when the child is even three or one week old. One week. And that's only when now you have realized that something happened during birth, like now, Brittany's case. Pretty in this case, in this case, you realize that she, she was told, the mother was told, the mother, the, the child didn't cry immediately after birth. Mm -hmm. Now, in that case, the, 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 the child is conditional to be followed and now to establish what more could happen so that we start the therapy early. Because the earlier you start therapy, the better. So take me through, what does that therapy look like? Is now, it stretching? In this, in, this, in this case, therapy, remember the condition affects the motor system of the, of the body, uh -huh. of the brain specifically, and that is a movement which includes the, the developmental milestone. Developmental milestone includes a sitting, standing, walking, and all that. So what we have to do in this case, we have to retrain, to train this child on how to, uh, to gain this day developmental milestone because they do delay the milestone do delay so what we do as occupation therapies is to train or to facilitate the the, the, the development of the delayed ma mm -hmm. milestones mm -hmm. so therapy in this case entails a lot of things like in this case uh, a child with cerebral palsy has got various uh, issues various complications all starting from feeding remember the mother has told us that um, the child is uh, had a problem with the with even uh, suck, sucking. Yes. That, that is breastfeeding was a problem. So, at that age, now let's say the child is uh, at the age of three weeks, we do facilitation of the oral muscles so that the child can be able to to suckle the, mm -hmm. the mother's and the mother's breast. Yes. So, and that's now. Remember, even even the circling is all about the the, the, the modern movement. So yes. we do facilitation by using inspiration techniques. Uh, like for example, when the, the, the child is in the old, we use some um, the, the, the we, we do call it munyonyi, the, the, the small kachubole on mm. or to katika. So the moment you provide that munyonyi on the child, so like you will be sensitizing the oral muscles that this is the way it should be circling. Now, as the child grows, you know, you'll be assessing the child's uh, challenge, the, the motor challenge areas, then you train. If it is the age of standing, maybe sitting, you train on how to sit, to stand, and depending on the severity of the condition, when the condition is not that mild, you'll see that the child will be gaining this milestone, even if he, she or he will delay, but with the therapy on training and on training on sitting and standing, the child will later gain some milestones. So over time, um, their, their muscles and their bodies is able to become a bit stronger and strengthened due to the therapy? And that is with intensive therapy. Uh -huh. At the same time, it depends with the severity mm -hmm. of the brain damage at birth. Okay. Yes. Winnie, you highlighted preventions. So first of all, for the sake of our audience, cerebral palsy, is it curable or not? Cerebral palsy, once it sets in, it's permanent. All right. Yeah. Number two, mm -hmm. prevention. Take us through that. Okay. I'd want to say that uh, cerebral palsy can be prevented. And maybe this is something that has not been, uh, has not received the weight it deserves. Mm -hmm. Prevention of cerebral palsy will start all the way before conception, where we are encouraging uh, mothers who, or women who think they are planning to get pregnant, 
or they are at risk of getting pregnant to get uh, to get health education and especially to start on antenatal visits as early as possible. I said again, cerebral palsy is about insult to the developing brain. The brain will develop from the third week of conception up to two years and beyond. So during this intensive brain development, the brain is usually very susceptible to damage or a little damage will destroy it. We are talking about brain cells being affected and a brain cell that is affected will die. And once this brain cell dies, it is not possible to revive it or to replace. That means whatever function that cell was supposed to conduct will then be affected or will manifest a deficit in the, in the, in the baby. So we can have cerebral palsy in the developing fetus if the mother has infections that may go up to the, affect the membranes that cover the placenta and the fetus. So mostly, and what I want to speak, especially about prevention in the antenatal or during pregnancy is about uh, treatment of infections. I have noted with a lot of concern that most of the mothers that we have in these uh, social media pages are asking for help from other women. Mm -hmm. And most of us think that having a vaginal discharge mm -hmm. is normal during mm -hmm. pregnancy. Yes, it is normal. But then it depends on the type of this discharge. So there are people who get the whitish discharge and they know it is candidiasis and they, get treat, they did treat themselves. But I want people to know that there are different types of discharges and it is always good to seek treatment or advice from a qualified practitioner to tell you this type of uh, discharge. Candidiasis is fungal. And fungal, uh, the candidiasis is a, normal, is a normal fungi in the reproductive system of the women but sometimes it gets infectious. During that time when it is, it is infectious, depending on the type of hygiene, there could be a secondary bacterial infection. And in this case, we may get something we call bacterial vaginosis, whose discharge is slightly different from the, from the candidiasis. And this one could go up, infect the membranes up to the uh, developing fetus. And there's something else we call the blood-brain barrier, which develops in the brain. For the developing, developing fetus, it is still not developed. So the infection that goes in is able to get into the fetus brain and destroy those cells. And this is, uh, these are the instances we are going to get a baby who is born with congenital cerebral palsy because the brain was affected during a pregnancy. Another thing that we may do, sorry, uh, is uh, treat uh, or get vaccinated in some areas where we get uh, cases of rubella vi uh, virus, we also, rubella measles, sorry, and we also get some other infections known as the torches. There are five. Sometimes, depending on how the mother presents, the doctor may decide, I want to test for this. Again, during the first antenatal visit, the earlier it comes, the better, because there's something we call the antenatal profile. Antenatal profile means the mother is tested for any infection in the urinary tract, tested for syphilis, the blood group is tested. So again, I'll de emphasize on the importance of the blood group. Right. You've heard of mothers who require some injection because their blood group is resus negative. So from moving from resus negative blood or its impact to cerebral palsy may not be felt during pregnancy. But if this mother gives birth and does, uh, if gives birth to a child who has been affected because their blood was resus negative, then this baby may develop something we call jaundice or the yellow coloration, which again, I'm not going to explain how it comes about, but the yellow coloration is about breakdown of red blood cells and the end product. Sometimes the jaundice may be so severe such that that end product called the bilirubin is so much in the body it, uh, and it has a high affinity for brain tissue. So again, it may affect the brain tissue. So when you talk about preventing it, when it, it affects the brain tissue, we get back into cerebral palsy. All right, so, so knowing your blood group or getting to know the blood group early will help the mothers prevent cerebral palsy after birth, not during uh, pregnancy. Okay, those yes. are very key points right there by Winnie. Let's take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll come back with the same panel and get to hear more from Brittany's mom, Sarah. Stay with us.